You see? So what's the general equation then? Uh, you're going to have 2 pi. Pi and pi are going to cancel. And then on the, this minus is going to come over here. You're going to get W revolution plus W precession T tropical. Okay? And then uh, you can take these two W's and put it at the bottom. 2 pi over W revolution plus W precession is the time that it takes for the tropical year to occur. Now, what's the equation for W revolution? W revolution is how many radians it makes. So we know that the Earth makes 2 pi radians in one side real year. Okay? So this is going to be 2 pi over T. Okay? So when side, the side real year from now on, I'm just going to call it one year. That's the traditional one year that we say. So this is just one year. So this is T year. <coughs> so it's just going to be W revolution is 2 pi over T year. W precession is 2 pi over T precession. In other words, the time that it takes for the Earth's, the Earth's axis to precess once. And then that's equal to T tropical. Okay, so now I'm going to go so 2 pi, 2 pi, 2 pi cancels. And then in order to simplify this, I can take the product of this and I can add them. And then I can take the product and take it up to the numerator. So I have T year. And then you have T precession over T year plus T precession that's equal to the time for the tropical year. Okay. So let's see if this makes sense by trying out some different numbers. Let's say it took the Earth one year to precess. Okay. And it took one, the Earth one year to revolve. What would happen? Okay. Uh, 1 times 1 over 1 plus 1, half a year. That means summer would occur every 6 months. The, um, winter would occur every 6 months. <clears throat> so if June was summer, uh, December would be summer, and then next June would be summer. And then what would happen? September would be winter, March would be winter, and then next September would be winter, and then next March would be winter. So the seasons would occur a lot more often if that was the case, you see, half a year. Why is that? Let's take a look from the top view. June, the Earth would be facing the sun. So by the time that the Earth came around halfway, how much would the axis have precessed? Well, we're assuming that the axis precesses once every year, right? So in half a year, how much does it precess? Half, halfway around. So if the axis is facing this way, it's going like this, 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 like this. By the time you get halfway, the axis has actually precessed halfway. So it's facing this way. So December, this June would be uh, summer. December would also be summer. Okay? And then in September, what would happen? Okay? The axis would have precessed a quarter of the way. It would be facing like that. So um, that would be um, uh, winter, right? And then, and then uh, the next quarter of the way, the axis would have precessed quarter, right? And then that would be uh, March. That would be winter also. So the tropical year would occur every half a year. Now we, uh, we see that it makes sense. Let's give another example. Let's say the precession had been every three years, and let's say the revolution had been one year, what would the tropical year be? <clears throat> so it'd be one times three over one plus three, right? Three-fourths. So every three-fourths of a year, the seasons would reoccur, 
let's see how, how that makes sense. So in June, summer would begin, okay? And then three fourths of a year means it goes around and then it comes back to March, right? So it comes back to March. This means three quarters of a year, the axis should be facing the sun. So let's see if that makes sense. If the precession rate of the earth was once every three years, right? So one precession every three years, that's what this means, right? The period for precession is three years. In three quarters of a year, how much would it have precessed, right? So one precession over three years, three quarters of a year, it would have precessed how much? Three, three quarter of a precession, right? So that means between the time that this goes from here to here, it's going slowly, very slowly, very slowly, very slowly, very slowly, very slowly, very slowly. By the time you get here, this has gone quarter of the way. So it's very, very slow, 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 slow. Then it comes here. It's now gone quarter. This has rotated quarter of the way and is now facing the sun, you see? So June would be summer, March would be summer. You see? So basically nine months, every nine months of the year, a season would reoccur. So that's what would be the tropical year, okay? So now let's do the actual numbers. Um, how long does it take the Earth to actually precess? 1,772 years, almost 26,000 years. So do we really feel the effect of that? Not much, very, very slight. So one precession of this axis takes almost 26,000 years. Okay, very, very slow. So now let's find out the, what the tropical year is. T tropical. would be one year, the sidereal year stays one year, and then this is the precession over one plus 25772. When you do that on the calculator, you're gonna get 0.999, very close to one, 0.9999611997057 years. So that's the tropical year. It's a little bit less than a side real year. Then let me multiply that by one side real year we said was how many days? 365.2563630004 days. <clears throat> and then that will tell us the tropical year. So it's a 365.2421900 nine four nine days so you see the tropical year because the precession is so slow is very tiny bit smaller than the side real year unnoticeably so you see but it is a significant enough difference you notice here uh, the side real year is larger than 365 and a quarter the tropical year is less than 365 and a quarter days. Uh, later, I'm gonna do a video on the Gregorian calendar and I'll explain what significance that has, okay? Okay, now let's subtract this from the, um, let's subtract the tropical number of days from the sidereal number of days and let's find out the exact difference. So T sidereal minus T tropical if you subtract these many days from these many days, what do you get? You're going to get 0 0.014172054596 days. <clears throat> okay. By the way, these tropical number of days, they are not constant because the Earth's orbit is actually elliptical. So I'm assuming circular orbits, but they actually change from year to year. But we, you can say this is the average number of days for a tropical uh, year, okay? So um, when you subtract them, you get these number of days, 
and then you multiply one day is 24 hours and one hour is 60 minutes. So what does that come out? That comes out to be 20 minutes, 20.477586 minutes. Okay. So what does this mean? That means after one tropical year, the sun is at a particular position in the sky, right? And then after one tropical year, the sun is at the same position in the sky at the same time of the day, okay? Where are the stars? It takes the stars 20 minutes later to catch up to where they used to be at that same time and same day, okay? So the stars are 20 minutes behind that. So basically, every year the sun is falling ahead of the stars by 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. So uh, that 20 minutes after every year starts adding up, ad adding up, okay? So it's, uh, even though the numbers here seem very small, over the course of a year, the 20 minutes does make a difference. So now you see the difference between the tropical year and the sidereal year. Next, I'm gonna do a video explaining the significance on this on our calendar system. Uh, namely, what's known as the Gregorian calendar.